Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, we are going to have a fun discussion about the top 10 champions, in my opinion, uh, so far in my experience playing Magnum Quest. We're going to go over kind of like who I would say is in that top 10 S tier that I would be most excited about investing in. So let's get into it. Alrighty, now first of all, this game is very new, so I do not have thousands of hours in this game. Uh, so it's gonna be mostly for entertainment purposes. I'm gonna do my best to give you my perspective, but just realize this is gonna be more entertainment and a fun resource and starting point for a discussion, uh, more than it's gonna be fact because I just haven't been able to play thousands of hours that I would need to really understand the ins and out of every single ability in the game. So I'm gonna do my best based on my experience so far to give you my top 10 as it stands today but just keep that in mind and use this to compare against your own opinions rather than using it as fact and why not at number 10 get it kicked off here with an honorable mention Gaia now Gaia is going to be falling off later on in the end game you can see here max level of 200 you're not going to be able to scale Gaia up as much as you would like some of those higher tier heroes where you can get the level way higher than 200 but uh, worth noting that this is one of the best heroes in the game you can invest in early game you get lots of AOB damage and then you can also at level 151 get a massive buff which is going to be gaining the leech effect uh, which translates 30% of damage dealt to HP and guy is going to be dealing a lot of HP so one of the best early to mid game uh, heroes that you can invest in to be your main source of damage dealing. At number nine, we've got Aluin. Now, uh, when I first started playing, Aluin was one of my favorite heroes. I was like, wow, this is a, just a god to your healer. Uh, starts to maybe fall off a little bit, in my opinion, and ends up being a little bit more of a snowball, win more than you were already going to hero, maybe. Uh, but it is nice to keep things healed and topped off. And she's got some really cool things, uh, like increasing defense once you get uh, later on, uh, like the skills unlocked a little bit more. Uh, the healing is over time, so that's nice during a battle and then you can also convert a little bit of the extra surplus healing to shield you can see here after a unit's fully healed 50 percent uh, at level two here uh, is going to be converted to shield which is nice so definitely some fun healer type support mechanics going on here but just be aware that maybe as you play a little bit more uh it, it, you may start to lose value because uh the healing effect can be super clutch but it ends up being a little bit more of a snowball ability than something that really makes the difference as you kind of play a little bit more i think and at number eight is going to be Gila. Now, uh, I actually learned this from trying to progress in the game and going up against Gila, noticing that it was always super annoying and just devastating my team, pummeling my front line and then destroying me, doing so much damage. Uh, this skill right here, you'll notice it right away, uh, is super annoying. Deal 70% attack continuous damage to all enemies in the front three times you'll notice it like pop 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 and then inflict the repel effect which pushes them back uh gala is uh gila is immune to all control spells when the skill is active uh can just really thump through your tank line and start wreaking havoc on your entire team so uh, you'll notice in some certain spots in the game going up against this is super hard so we're going to bring in gila at number eight at number seven, we have got Oseche. Now, uh, I've got a soft spot for this one here because I've noticed I'll be kind of stuck on something, uh, one of those dungeon floors or stuck in the campaign. I'll swap in Oseche and I'll just blast through the level. Uh, you'll super notice this spell when it goes off. The Tide Chorus that is going to uh, use a voice to sedate all enemies for four seconds. You can increase it to five seconds and then vulnerate, which is going to make them take increased damage. It's a ridiculous ability. It completely changes the game when it goes off. So uh, Osise definitely helped me to progress in some stages that I otherwise definitely would have lost. At number six, we're going to go with Fair. Definitely an early to mid game staple for almost everybody out there. A lot of fun to uh, play around with different formations and get lots of utility out of him because he can really manipulate the battlefield uh, by gravitating nearby enemies towards him, uh, breaking their defense. Uh, so lots of utility here with Fair that you can play around with, uh, move around on the battlefield to, to like couple things up, do a bunch of AOE damage to them with like Gaia or Airs. So Fair, definitely a lot of fun to play around with. 
At number five, we're gonna go with Harry. Now, similar to Osiche, I noticed when I got Harry in the lineup, I was able to get past some hard checkpoints of my progression. He's got a lot of haste manipulation, which is very good. He can inspire the haste of some allies around him while also lowering the haste of some enemies here with some self-sustain. So Harry is definitely a presence on the battlefield and helped me progress on some of my hard checkpoints that were difficult for me to get through. At number four, we have got Eon. Now, uh, she is super fun and super clutch and really scales well later on with lots of level ups. Uh, the entangle effect is ridiculous. We've also got a uh, shield protecting a friendly unit with the lowest HP uh, by blocking the enemy to attack it for four seconds and deal some damage. Uh, and then we're going to protect two uh, units in total instead of one. So that's like double the value levels up super well. And the same thing here, you can see the level three is going to be skill can be activated twice in each battle when a friendly unit receives fatal damage the unit becomes enveloped in vines for six seconds and recovers five percent of its max hp that increases to eight uh, percent and then it says only once but you can level that up to twice so you will notice that eon comes in super clutch and is an amazing support to have leveled up now we move to the top three and we're going to kick it off with Kato's. A lot going on here. Uh, we've got inflict a burn and a silence on all enemies for six seconds and then deal 60% attack per second and render them unable to use any skills and it cannot be dispersed. That is insane. Anytime you get silence in a game like this, it's going to bring insane value. And then he also has this craziness going on uh, where upon death, if there are any enemies uh, with less than 30% HP on the battlefield, a searing whip shows up and drags that enemy uh, into the abyss with him and they cannot be revived. So Katos definitely has a pretty insane kit with lots going on. At number two, we have got one of the cooler concepts for a champion I've seen in a game like this uh, with the with the dragon uh, kind of child next to her and the dragon wings going on here. Definitely an amazing aesthetic champion, but uh, Sir is just so good for progression, can do it all, can do damage, can be put in the front row as a tank, just brings insane value, will really do everything for you. A lot going on in the kit and just so much that she brings to really any team that you put her in that you will get progression from leveling up a well-built sir and at number one i am going to place airs uh, you'll notice going up against this guy is super annoying because of the immunity and the death avoidance he's got aoe damage he's got the whirlwind effect uh he, he can break defense you can see your physical defense of all affected targets reduced by 25 percent he's got some self heals when you get things leveled up aries also gains the leech effect which translates 40 percent of the damage dealt to hp uh with with the immunity the self attack and haste uh buffing just everything going on great survivability great damage is going to help you progress a ton by getting this guy super leveled up so that is my list personally and just to refresh your memory it was number 10 gaia number nine aluin number eight gila number seven osiche number six fair number five harry number four eon uh number three katos number two sir and number one right here Aries. So uh, definitely let me know down in the comment section if I missed anything that you think should have definitely been on here. I really enjoy hearing your opinions as well so I can formulate uh, and, and kind of change these things in the future and evolve my opinion with things that I gather from other people to increase my knowledge as well. So I uh, would love to hear what you have to say down below in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.